uh, they're going to take Andrew Jackson off the $20 bill and put Harriet Tubman on there. And I think the most... Let's call uh, I know this is viscerally triggering for a lot of us. One, because some people are Andrew Jackson fans, so removing Andrew Jackson in and of itself is triggering. Right. But resume, removing Andrew Jackson to replace him with an ugly an ugly black woman. With Aunt Jemima. Yeah, is very triggering. Aunt Jemima is a lot more pleasant it, to look at than this Yeah, Aunt Jemima is actually better looking than Harriet Tubman. I mean, Harriet Tubman... <laughs> All the images of her. There's photographs of her. She looks like a gorilla, an actual gorilla. And yeah. she actually looks just horrendous, just awful. She, she looks like either gorilla or E.T., depending on which photo you're looking at. <laughs> she looks like she's blind and doesn't know what she should be focusing on. She And she <laughs> probably know? is, because here's the thing, and this is the kind of thing I wanted to get into. I don't know if people want to comment on the reasoning behind this change and, and sort of the insult, the obvious, in my mind, the obvious cultural... Well, yeah, this is eight years of presidency. I mean, this is what. But but it's it's not just it's this is obviously an attack. Yeah, on yeah, of course. white America. Like of course it's it not. Is. I don't even think that that's like paranoid or crazy. No, to it's interpret not it that way. This is literally an attack on white America, and it's like one of our most badass presidents. Um, also, Old you know, Hickory. also, I think the fact that he was uh, anti-central banking, I'm sure that the Federal Reserve had a little, you know, some satisfaction in removing him based on that. There's multiple angles. I want to talk about Harriet Tubman, the myth of Harriet Tubman, the yeah, myth right. of the Underground Railroad, and I want to talk about Cuck's Cucking. Oh, my God. The Cuck's the Cucking. Cucks, the the Cuck's part. Cucking on this was so bad. Epic. And I, it's funny. The day it happened, the day the announcement was made, I said, like, how long before National Review praises this? And somebody, right. Sean Lass, as a matter of fact, posted right underneath my post a link to the article where they had already come <laughs> they out. They already did it. <laughs> they already done it. And I was like, shit, they just announced this like two hours ago. <laughs> and they had that. They must have had that article like written up, just ready to go cucking for at light you know. speed. Like they're like cucking. They're like quantum cucking. They like cuck before it happens. They like yeah, yeah. <laughs> they wrote yeah. that article up before it happened, yeah. just in case that they would yeah. be able to signal on this issue. Yeah. Have that one ready. Have the Harriet Tubman article ready. Oh, it's just fucking. But it was also the, it was also anti Jackson and pro Tubman. Yeah, the, yeah. Of course, they frame it as like. Oh, he's a Democrat. Man, she was a gun-toting ninja well, Republican. We're, guess, yeah, we're already going to we're already going to talk about the, the cutting. So they frame it as a gun-toting Republican. Well, let me read the line. Let me let me let me read the yeah, line. In yeah, short, yeah. Harriet Tubman was a black Republican gun-toting veterans activist with ninja-like spy skills and strong Christian beliefs. You have to be fucking ninja-like <laughs> spy skills. <laughs> Someone yeah. su suggested that because she seems so mentally retarded that she would be a really good for this particular role because no one would suspect her. Yeah, well, they were saying that too. I saw that, yeah. yeah. That's what I want to get into. Yeah. Because in my mind, not just in my mind, but I think a lot of people, a lot of historians agree, maybe don't say it, but agree. That there's, there's kind of a consensus that developed. Now, Harriet Tubman is also linked with this concept of the Underground Railroad. Right. And the image I think that people get of the Underground Railroad is that it's like this kind of network of, you know, in some cases literally underground, some cases not underground. It's Definitely involved safe houses. It was a tunnel from the antebellum south into the future. Where you could escape right. slavery. I think just, I think there was some of it that they were saying what was the I that tunnels. I mean, I yeah. was presented with it yes. when I was a kid of imagery of of blacks like going through literal tunnels, right? Right. And then there's, there's also there's also say there was no trains, of course, but there's also safe houses. This was integral safe houses with hidden rooms. Yes. Something that for some reason the left loves stories of safe houses and hidden rooms. Hidden rooms, from attics. These evil, evil fascist authorities or something. Yeah. Okay, and then markers, like coded messages and markers, like usually in the form of quilts that were left out to tell slaves, hey, this is a safe house. If you're escaping, 
here's some you know high status white people that will hide you in their cellar or attic or hidden room or whatever now mm -hmm. none of this is true of course okay. none, none of literally none of it there's hey, no I, evidence for any of this I have a very funny story to contribute yeah do it uh, I remember do being it, I remember being in, uh, only recently, not super recently, but recently found out that it was a complete myth only because all this talk of, uh, of this kind of garbage, like, you know, brought it back to my mind. But, uh, I remember in grade school learning about this, this, uh, s uh, slave spiritual that was always sung apparently, which they told us over and over was a true story where they sung this song called follow the drinking gourd. Oh, I don't I know, know if you remember, remember this. this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was, you know, follow the Big Dipper in the sky at night, and, like, mm -hmm. it will just, like, lead you to this river where, like, magic, where, like, you know, magic white man with a peg leg will, like, take you to, <laughs> like, to, to freedom. Um, and I'm, I remember asking really honest questions and not, like, and them just telling me, like, it's just a mystery as if, like, that was supposed to, like, Suffice. Like, I remember how being. Do you a, I remember the being. Big Dipper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like, well, not That's only my that. First but, question. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I was a, I was really young at the time. I couldn't have even you know formulated that, but it was like really childish questions that they still couldn't have answered. Like, uh, um, you know, f uh, for example, asking uh, why did uh, like how how come the uh, slave owners weren't able to just shut this down. I mean, like, it seems pretty obvious if all the slaves are singing it all day. Yeah. They're just like, well, they were really, like, secret about it. Yeah. I, I mean... Like, well, apparently not. There was all... There was memes <laughs> floating around of, of they had a secret language. I guess they, they had codes and songs. They had quills. They had all this shit that would tell them where all these good magical white abolitionist people were going to hide them and then get them out of the south and this and that now this is all a myth and this is sort right, of right but, but that was, but that was like what i was thinking in my head was like even as a kid it was like okay like this song was apparently being sung for a long time and right. all the slaves singing it would just run in the same direction and you're right. you're telling me that <laughs> well i think the idea like, is you tell me that slave owners not only slave owners but like bounty hunters or like anyone else yeah. Like wouldn't have like figured this out. <laughs> like, yeah. Was, yeah. Well, that that's part of that was like one of the chief arguments that was sort of brought up against the idea that there was these routes or or hidden. It's like the the, the slave catchers would have figured this out, right? Like they they weren't stupid. The idea is that like, oh, they were they paid so little attention to the Negroes, right? And that they didn't they didn't know they were speaking in code or something like this. This is bullshit. So there was this book that was written by an abolitionist in like the 1890s that was like his memories and memories of other abolitionists of the Underground Railroad. And this was taken as historical fact. And it was only later when I guess the study of history changed or the way they scrutinized sources. So they kind of went back and took a look at it. And they're like, yeah, this is kind of bullshit. Like we shouldn't look at this is we shouldn't look at this as history. This is more sort of folk legend. You know what I mean? It's sort of right. evolved. Yeah. Sorry, it's like yeah, there was a house. You know, my aunt has a room in her house, and and Harriet Tubman hid there with some slaves one night. You know what I mean? And these stories yeah. then like, get passed down, etc. There, yeah, right. there was a, another question I brought up was this guy, apparently his name was Peg Leg Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, was, but, he was very progressive. But, yeah, but I, no, but I was at, but I asked like, because I was thinking about it for a while as a, like, you know, little kid, th little kid thought. But I asked him if like, so Peg Leg Joe, apparently did Peg Leg Joe just sit there on his boat all day, every day waiting for slaves? Yeah. Because apparently like when, like whenever they went out there, they would find Peg Leg Joe and yeah, Peg Leg Joe there. would. And Peg Leg Joe would row them to like some place where they like lived happily ever after, and he was just always there if you followed the drinking gourd. Apparently, yeah. Even though, like you know, in accordance to where and what location, nobody really knew. Apparently, if you just you know walk in the direction of the Big Dipper, you find Peg Leg Joe eventually.